Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a modern oversized sweater dress. For this one, we went for a peasanty dress vibe using the light and airy moss single combo, a different kind of top band and balloon sleeve for added comfort. Snuggle season is officially upon us. Speaking of, if you like crochet sweaters, you can snuggle in, you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet patterns, including the best oversized sweaters, with new patterns on the way, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support, so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category 4 yarn work, but I used a total of 800 grams of yarn, and that's 1200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your dip of choice. I'd have to say that I'm a guacamole type of gal, but I do enjoy salsa as well. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using two stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. And single crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6.5mm hook, and we're going to start by making an even number chain about 1 inch underneath our underarm, down to where we want the bottom of this top to be. Now I want mine to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to start by making a chain 60, and that's 17 and a half inches or 45 centimeters. Now this piece is going to have a three row sequence. It's going to be two moss stitch rows and then a single crochet row. So let's get started on our first moss stitch row. After our chain, we're going to make a chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as a chain. And from here, we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So here's one, here's two, three is the one that we blocked off, and then into the chain right after that is our fourth. Single crochet into that chain. Insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, and we should have formed our first chain space. Let's do that again. Chain one, skip that following chain, and then into the chain right after that, one single crochet, forming our second chain space. Let's do this a few more times. We're going to chain one, skip that following chain into the next, a single crochet, and then once more, chain one, skip a chain, into the following, another single crochet. So all together we should have one, two, three, four chain spaces. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. Our first moss stitch row is finished. Let's get started on the second one. Anytime we're getting started on a moss stitch row, we're going to chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as a chain and we're going to flip our work. Now for every second moss stitch row that we're doing, our single crochets is going to be worked into our previous rows chain space or that gap that we have. So after that chain two, we're going to skip that first stitch, which is a single crochet from that previous row. And then into that next stitch, which should be our chain space, just insert your hook into that entire gap with one single crochet. And that forms our first chain space for our row two. Now just remember that this first chain space may be a little bit smaller when we start working on the following row. And we're going to do this again. We're going to chain one, skip that following stitch which should be our single crochet from the previous row, and then into that next stitch, which is our chain space, insert with one single crochet, and continue to chain one, skip a stitch, and then single crochet into the next stitch all the way down. And since we aren't doing any increases or decreases into these moss stitch rows, we should have the same amount of sets as our previous row. 
our row one and two are finished. The third row in our row sequence was a single crochet like I said previously. So getting started on the single crochet row, we're going to chain one and flip our work. And our single crochet is going to be one single crochet into every stitch and chain space. So just do the first few, find that first stitch from our previous row, which is that single crochet, insert with one single crochet, and then into that next stitch, which is that chain space, insert with one single crochet. And we're going to need to increase at the end of this row. So put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space until we have just one stitch left. And it should be that first chain space that we made from our previous row. So make sure that we're ending on an odd number. We are at the end of our row three. We should have one stitch left, which is that first chain space that we made from our previous row. And now we're going to do an increase of three single crochets into there. And we're doing an increase of three so that every row ends on an even number. So into that last chain space, insert with one single crochet into that same chain space with a second and then same chain space with a third single crochet. And now from here, we're going to continue to repeat our two moss stitch rows and then our single crochet row for the underarm portion that we need. But since our row sequence is worked in rows of three, the next single crochet row that we have is going to start with an increase of three because we need the increase portion to stay along the top. So let's do our following two moss stitch rows and then we'll do the single crochet row together. So just get started on the following moss stitch row, chain two, that first chain counts as our turning chain, that second chain counts as a chain and flip your work. We're going to skip that first stitch into the stitch right after that, a single crochet that forms our first chain space and then chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the following. We're going to continue to do our moss stitch, making our way all the way down and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Now all together, we should have one, two, three, and four rows. Getting started on a row five, it's going to be another moss stitch row. So chain two, flip our work, and we're going to skip that first stitch and into that next stitch, which is a chain space, single crochet, forming our first chain space for this row. And we're going to continue this to reach the end of the row. We have just finished up our fifth row. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and now we're going to get started on our sixth row, which should be our single crochet row. Now, like I said, our increases for the single crochet all needs to be along the same side. So getting started on our sixth row, we're now going to start with an increase of three single crochets. So chain one and flip your work. Into the last stitch from our previous row, insert with an increase of three single crochets. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and then our single crochet row for usual. So one single crochet into every chain space and stitch. So we have just finished up our row six, which was our single crochet row that started with an increase of three single crochets. Now this is our underarm portion. This is gonna be the best way to add width to our piece if you would like a larger size or an oversized fit. Now I would like for mine to be an oversized fit, so I will be adding more rows, basically just repeating, the six previous rows that we did until I get an underarm portion the width that I need. Now when we meet back, we are going to need to meet back right after we finish our first moss stitch row that ends along the top. So since we all ended right after our sixth row, which is a single crochet row that ends along the bottom, our following row is going to be a moss stitch row that ends along the top. So I will be doing one more row just to show you what it looks like. So since we're all along the bottom, chain two, flip our work, and then do our moss stitch until we reach the top of our piece. I've just finished up my row seven. From here, we're going to continue to repeat rows two through seven until we get the underarm width that we need. Now, if you would like a fitted size small, you can keep this at seven rows, but I would like to have an oversized fit. So I will continue to repeat these rows until I get an underarm portion that I like. Now, if you'd like an oversized fit like mine, I'd suggest to make an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm to the front of your body. So right about where mid collarbone is. And then from there, add an additional two inches. That should give you a really nice loose fit, but if you wanna add more or take away some, that's completely up to you as well. Now, like I said, we just wanna make sure that we're ending right after our first moss stitch row that ends along the top. So some quick math for you guys, if you guys would need to add rows to your underarm portion as well, continue to add six rows to our first seven rows until you get the underarm size that you'd like. 
I'll meet you back when I have mine. Now my underarm portion is finished. I have a total of 13 rows. My width is three and a half inches or nine centimeters. And now we're going to start working on the body portion. This part's gonna be pretty simple, but we do need to make a chain that reaches up to about mid chest, keeping in mind that we will have a top border along that as well. So I'd like for my length to be just about two and a half inches or seven centimeters. And we do need to make sure that it is an even number. So I made a chain of 10. And after our chain, all we're gonna do is continue on with our row sequence, making our way all the way across our chest until we finish right after our first mosted row that ends along the bottom. So let's just get started on the following mosted row together. So after our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain, do a chain two, that first chain counts as a turning chain, that second chain counts as a chain, and then we're gonna single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So let's count one, two, three, and then four into that fourth chain insert with a single crochet forming our first chain space. Just to do the next one, we're gonna chain one, skip a chain and then single crochet into the next. Now we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way down. And we do wanna make sure that once when it comes to doing our second moss stitch row, each of our single crochets is worked into our previous moss stitch rows chain space. And we're gonna continue on with our two moss stitch row and one single crochet row row sequence, but now with no increases and no decreases working our way across our chest. So at the end of this row, our next row in our row sequence is going to be a single crochet row. So chain one, flip our work, and then one single crochet into every stitch and chain space. Then two moss stitch rows after that. I'll meet you back when we have this body portion all finished up. Like I said, after our first moss stitch row that ends along the bottom. I am back and the main portion of my body is all finished. I have a total of 52 rows and this body portion reaches from mid collarbone to about mid collarbone. And now we're gonna get started on our underarm. So this underarm is going to mirror the first one that we did. We all should have ended right after a moss stitch row that ended along the bottom. Now our following row or the first underarm row for this portion is going to start with a moss stitch row. So we're gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made when we got started with the body portion. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a total chain of 10. So along this side, I inserted my stitch marker into the 10th stitch from the top. And now from here, we're going to do our following moss stitch row, making our way all the way up until we're worked into the chain space right before our stitch marker. I've made my way up with my first moss stitch row. My last single crochet was worked into that chain space right before my stitch marker. Now our following row is going to be our single crochet row, but now since we're working on this side of our underarm, we're gonna start it with a decrease of three single crochets since we're along the top. So we're all gonna start with a chain one and flip our work. Now to do a decrease of three single crochets, we're gonna insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through into that following stitch, which is a chain space, pull through and then into that following stitch, which is a single crochet, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. And since this is a single crochet row, put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space. Our following rows after this are going to be two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. After that second moss stitch row, our following row is going to be a single crochet row. So chain one, flip our work, and then put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space, making our way up towards the top, leaving the last three so we can decrease together once more. We are back, last I left you, we are finishing up our single crochet row. Right after that, we did two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. Then we started our following single crochet row, making our way all the way up, leaving the last one, two, and three stitches. Just to remind you that third stitch is a chain space and it might be a little hard to see. And we're gonna close this row off with a decrease of three single crochets. So start by inserting a hook into that third to last stitch from our previous row, which should be a chain space pull through into that following stitch, which is a single crochet, pull through and then into that last stitch, which is a chain space, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four. And our following row is going to be a moss stitch row. So we're going to chain two, flip our work and then do our moss stitch row all the way down. Now it's going to be a repeat of these six rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows that we started this piece off with. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut and then I will meet you back. The entirety of my front panel is finished. 
I have a total of 63 rows and my width is just about 17 inches or 43 centimeters. From here, I did do a chain up one and cut and now we're going to start working on the top band. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the top corner stitch and then we're gonna single crochet across. So I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. From here, we're gonna work our way across, putting one single crochet into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row right here. It should be a side moss stitch row. So find that top loop and insert your hook. If you're like me, you should have a tail end, so go ahead and place your tail end over your hook, and then we're going to single crochet around everything so we don't need to weave in this tail end later. Let's do the next one. Our following side row should be a side single crochet row. So insert your hook in through that top loop and single crochet. And once more, our following side row should be a moss stitch row. So find that top loop, insert with a single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way across. So our single crochet row is finished. Now our top band is going to be back loop slip stitch rows. So we're all gonna start by making a chain the height that we'd like for our top band to be. And I'd like for my top band to be just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain six. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And now we're going to do a slip stitch row. Into that chain that we blocked off with the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, gently pull through both loops on our hook. Again, insert your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through both. And we're gonna to continue to put one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly, otherwise the flying row could be a little too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So inserting our hook into that first stitch into the base, we're going to insert with another slip stitch, but this slip stitch isn't gonna count as a stitch. That's just to connect our row one. And into that following stitch into the base, we're gonna slip stitch into there as well, just to work our way up to the following row. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything and flip your work. We're now gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding the last stitch from our previous row, not into those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert our hook in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Yarn over and gently pull through everything on our hook. Let's do one more. Into that next stitch's back loop, insert, gently pull through everything. And we're gonna to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and then I'll meet you back at the base to connect it once more. And now that we're back at the base, we're going to connect it. So find that next stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off our row three, and just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then our front panel will be all done. So when the entirety of our front panel is done, we're, we're gonna make one more panel that is exactly the same. Then I'll meet you back to seam everything together. My slip stitch top band is all finished. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and I made a second panel. Once we have both of our panels finished, we can seam up the sides together and get started on our sleeve. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be doing a single crochet seam, making sure that we're single crocheting in through both the front and back panel at the same time. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. We are then gonna find that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through there. And if you're like me, you should have a tail end, so place that over your hook so you can weave that in as we go. And then we're gonna single crochet around everything. Let's do that again, into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, Next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet, and then that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. And when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. Now that our sides are seamed, we're gonna get started on our strap. 
So first things first, we're going to make sure the work is slipped right side out, meaning all of our seams are along the inside. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of our top band. Now from here, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. From here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row for the total width that we'd like for our strap to be. Now I'd like for my strap to be just about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm going to be doing about eight single crochets. So let's do the first few together. This is my first side row right here, which is this divot. I'm going to find that top loop, insert in through there, and do just one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop. It is this raised row and insert with another single crochet. Let's just do the next set of rows together. This is my following side row, which is this divot. Insert in through that top loop with one single crochet. And then this is my following side row, which is this raised row. Insert in through there with another single crochet. Now, like I said, continue this until we have the width of our strap that we'd like. I will be doing a total of eight single crochets. Now that I have my single crochets finished up, we're going to be doing back loop slip stitch rows. So we're going to chain one and just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And when we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then repeat. Our strap isn't going to have any increases or decreases. So we're going to continue on with our back loop slip stitch row until we have an even number of rows that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder, making sure that we're placing this top band where we want it to sit on our chest. And when we have this first strap finished up, we're going to do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the back side of our back panel. But when we finish up the second one, we are not going to do a chain up of one and cut because we're going to seam it together right away after that. Just one quick tip before I let you guys go, make sure that we're stretching our strap as if we're wearing it because it does have a decent amount of stretch to it. And we do want to make sure that we're not making the strap too long because that makes the sleeve just a little bit looser so it'll fall off our shoulder. I've just finished up my straps on both my front and my back panel, including our first single crochet row at a total of 18 rows, and this length is 4 inches or 10 centimeters unstretched. Now after I finished the first one, I did do a chain up of one and cut, and after the second one, I'm still attached so that we can all seam everything together. So let's make sure that our work is still flipped right side out because this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so let's insert our hook in through both the corner stitch of the front and the back panel. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And now let's find our first stitch into our front panel and insert our hook only in through that front loop. Next, we're going to find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert only in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop and pull through everything and then that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and when we don't do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat our strap on the other side. So now that our straps are all seamed up we're ready to get started on our armhole. So first things first let's make sure that the work is still flipped right side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam and we're going to start with a single crochet row. So insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, it's gonna be a single crochet row, putting one single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into every stitch and chain, and then making our way all the way up and around. So let's do our first few single crochets into our side rows. Our first side row should be a side moss stitch row, so I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop with one single crochet. Our following side row should be another moss stitch row, so insert in through that top loop and insert with one single crochet again. And then our following side row should be the side single crochet row. Insert into that top loop and single crochet. Now from here, we're going to continue on putting one single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into, into every stitch slash chain, one single crochet into every stitch, and then one single crochet into every side row until we reach the seam that we have for our strap. And then I'll meet you back. I've made my way up with my single crochet row, and the last single crochet that I did is worked into the side row right before our shoulder seam. Now from here, we're going to need to insert our stitch marker into that stitch, 
and then also into the following stitch that we do on the other side of our shoulder seam so that we have two middle points. So finding that first side row on the other side of our shoulder seam, insert your hook with one single crochet and insert your stitch marker into there as well. Now we have two middle stitches and from here we're gonna continue on with our single crochet row, making our way all the way down and then slip stitch into that chain space. And then we can get started on the sleeve. But a really quick tip, this armhole is going to be a pretty decent size because we did want it to be a balloon sleeve as well. So if it's a little big, don't worry about it. I'll meet you back once we have the single crochet row finished. Our single crochet row is finished. We are now going to make an even number chain the length that we'd like for our sleeve to be. Since I like to have long balloon sleeves, I'm going to start by making a chain of 44, and that's going to be 14 inches or 36 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing the same row sequence as our body portion. So two moss stitch rows and then a single crochet row. So getting started on our first moss stitch row, just as a refresher, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as a chain. Now we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So let's all count together. One, two, three is that chain that we blocked off and then four. So bring your hook down into that fourth chain with one single crochet. And that forms our first chain space. From here, chain one, skip a chain and then single crochet into the following and continue this making our way all the way down. We've made our way down with our moss stitch row. Now we're gonna connect it into the base and it's gonna be connected the same way that we connected the top band. So we're gonna find that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook in through there, yarn over, hold through everything to connect our row one. Then to work our way up to our following row, slip stitch into the next stitch into the base. Those two slip stitches don't count as a stitch and we're gonna flip our work. And our following row is going to be a moss stitch row. So anytime we're along the base and we're working our way out, starting a moss stitch row, we're going to chain one, skip that first stitch, and that first stitch should be a single crochet from our previous row, and then in through that following stitch is our gap, so insert in through that gap with one single crochet, and that forms our first chain space for this moss stitch row. And again, we're gonna chain one, skip that following stitch, and then into that next, which happens to be a chain space, insert with a single crochet and continue this until we reach the end of the row. We are now at the end of our second row, which is a moss stitch row. And like I said, our following row is going to be a single crochet row. So just chain one, flip our work, and then put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space until we have one stitch left. We've made our single crochet row all the way down into our last stitch, which should be a chain space, we're gonna do an increase of three single crochets. And for this portion, we're only going to be increasing into the stitch that's nearest to the base for our single crochet rows. So all of our moss stitch rows are gonna be pretty simple. So into that last stitch, which is a chain space, we're gonna insert with an increase of three single crochets. So there's one, there's two, and here's three. And we're gonna connect it into the base the same way that we just did. So into that next stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch, and our row three is finished. Now we do need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and we're gonna get started on our following row, and our following row is going to be a moss stitch row. So like I said, whenever we're getting started on a moss stitch row and we're at the base, working our way out towards the end, we're going to chain one, skip that first stitch, making sure that we're not looking at those two slip stitches, skip that first stitch, and then in through the following, a single crochet, forming our first chain space for this row, chain one, Skip a stitch, single crochet into the following. Now we're gonna continue this, making our way all the way down. And at the end of the row, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and then do our second moss stitch row for our three row row sequence. I'll meet you back at the base. All together, we should have one, two, three, four, five rows finished. Now we need to connect our fifth row into the base. So just like before, find that next stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there, and then we're gonna find that next available stitch, slip stitch into there to work our way up to our row six and flip our work. Now we've just done our two moss stitch rows, now we're gonna do another single crochet row, but like I said in one of our previous clips, 
We're always going to do an increase of three single crochets whenever we're closest to the base, working on our single crochet row. So since we're here, we're going to find that first stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that single crochet. And we're going to insert with three single crochets. So there's one, there is two, and there's three, and then that's it. From here, finish up our single crochet row by putting one single crochet into every chain space and stitch. And from here, we're going to continue to repeat our previous rows until we reach our first stitch marker stitch along the top, making sure that we're worked into that stitch. And then I'll meet you back to get started on the decrease side of our sleeve. All right, so the first half of my sleeve is all finished. I am worked into that first stitch marker stitch that we have. Now the following row for our sleeve may be a little bit different for everyone, so let me just explain what we're going to do. So starting on the other side of our sleeve, we're going to basically mirror everything that we did on this side, but instead of doing an increase of three single crochets into our single crochet rows, we're going to do a decrease of three so that we can end with the same amount of stitches as chains that we made when we started our sleeve. So just as an example, my last row that's worked into that stitch marker stitch along the top is a single crochet row. So since we're mirroring it, my following row is going to be a single crochet row. And like I said, we're gonna be doing a decrease of three now. If your last row was a moss stitch row, either your first row or your second row, that is completely fine as well. You are doing just fine. Working down our decrease side, we still aren't gonna be doing increases or decreases into the moss stitch row. So from here, just mirror the following rows however you need to. And within the next clip, I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna be doing our decrease of three and connecting it into the base into the single crochet rows. Now, since I'm along the outer end, I'm going to put one single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three. And then I'll meet you back just to show you how we're going to do our decrease of three singles. Now, my first single crochet row for my decrease end, I needed to work my way all the way up and left the last three stitches. Now we're going to do a decrease of three single crochets. So find that third to last stitch from our previous row, pull through into that second to last, pull through, and also into that last, pull through, pull through all four loops, and now we're going to slip stitch it into that base. So into that next available stitch that we have, slip stitch it into there to close off this single crochet row. And from here, our falling rows and moss stitch row, so slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, chain one, flip our work and do our moss stitch all the way down. Our following row is another moss stitch row, so bring our moss stitch back up, and then I'll meet you back to show you how we're gonna get started on our following single crochet row when we start along the base. Now we have just finished our second moss stitch row, and now we're gonna get started on our single crochet row that starts along the base. So we're now going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base to close off this moss stitch row, and then slip stitch into that next available stitch to get started on our single crochet row. Those two slip stitches don't count as a stitch and we're gonna flip our work. Now we're always going to have a decrease of three single crochets into the three stitches nearest to our base. So we're gonna find that first stitch from our previous row, pull through into that next stitch, pull through and into the stitch right after that, pull through, pull through all four, and then finish off our single crochet row by putting one single crochet into every stitch and chain space. So we're gonna continue on with these rows our two moss stitch rows, and then a single crochet row that always has a decrease of three into the three stitches nearest to the base. And that's the same, no matter if we're working out towards the end or in towards the base. We're gonna continue on with these rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't, I'll meet you back to seam everything together. So I've made my way all the way down. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and now we're going to seam our sleeve together. So first things first, let's all make sure the work is flipped wrong side out. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure and this is going to be a single crochet seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides. So find that first available stitch into the front panel, insert. First available stitch into the back panel, insert and single crochet around everything, and then that's it. We're gonna continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, let's get started on our cuff. Now our sleeves should be pretty significant in size, but now we're going to need to cinch it a little bit. So let's all start by inserting our five millimeter hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom of our sleeve, making sure that our work is flipped right side out. Next, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. 
pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to do a single crochet row with a decrease so that I can cinch. So let's all start by finding our first available side row. Mine is the side single crochet row. I'm going to insert my hook in through that top loop and pull through. I'm also going to be inserting my hook into that following side row, which should be the side moss stitch row for me. Insert into there, pull through, pull through all three. That is our decrease of two single crochets. And we're going to continue that, making our way all the way around. Now getting started on the next one, we're going to find our following side row. Mine is the side moss. Insert, pull through, and then also into that following top loop for my following row. Pull through, pull through all three. And we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around and slip stitch into that chain space. And a really quick tip, the single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So if it's a little too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip, or if it's a little too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip. So now that we've single crocheted along the bottom of our sleeve, we're going to start with the length of our cuff. So we're going to start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. I'd like for mine to be about 3 inches or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 15. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain 1. That chain 1 doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull through both loops, and that's it. Continue putting one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly. We've put one slip stitch into every chain, and now we're going to connect it into the base. So find that next available stitch into the base, insert, yarn over, pull through everything. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it, and now we're going to get started on the following row, so we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, and flip our work. And from here, we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. At the end of this row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, and also the same way that we connected the top band. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I will meet you back to seam everything together. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. So now let's seam it all together with an outside loop slip stitch seam. So first things first, let's make sure that work is still flipped right side out. Next, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, yarn over and pull through everything. Now we're all going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, and we're going to insert into that front loop only. Next, we're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert into that back loop. And when we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, and pull through everything on our hook once more. Into the next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, yarn over, pull through everything, and that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that both of our sleeves and cuffs are all finished up, we're going to get started on the bottom band. So we're going to start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to insert our six and a half millimeter hook into any one of the side rows along the bottom. Now we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're going to make our way all the way around, putting one single crochet into every side row. So just to do the first few, this is my first side row right here. Mine is my first single crochet row, but if yours is a moss stitch row, that's fine. Just put one single crochet into there. Again, into that following side row. Mine is this moss stitch row now. Insert with a single. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. And a quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once when the single crochet row is done, try on our piece, making sure that it can still fit. If it's a little too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's a little too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. So my single crochet row is all finished up, and now we're going to make a chain the length that we'd like for the bottom band to be. I'd like for mine to be just about three and a half inches or nine centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain 12. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain one. 
That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, and now we're gonna slip stitch all the way down. So inserting your hook into that second chain from our hook, yarn over, gently pull through everything, and continue putting one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we put one slip stitch into every chain, we're gonna slip stitch it into the base. So inserting your hook into that next stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it. And then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So just do the first one. Find the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, pull through everything, and then that's it. We're gonna continue doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. So basically repeating everything that we did for our cuff. Continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then I'll meet you back to seam it all together. So I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're gonna seam it together, and this is going to be the same seam that we did for the cuff, so let's just do the first few. So let's all start off by making sure that our work is slipped right side out, and then we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Next, we're gonna yarn over, pull through everything. Now let's do our outside loop slip stitch seam together. Finding that first stitch into the front panel, we're gonna insert our hook into that front loop, Finding the next stitch into the back panel, inserting into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then yarn over, pull through all three. And we're gonna continue this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up a one and cut. All right, we have just finished seaming up the bottom band and we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.